Welcome to the Statistic in ED YouTube channel. Today I want to show you how you can achieve two tasks within one function. Firstly, implement a progress bar and secondly, run your code in parallel. Now there are a number of packages that can implement progress bars in R. Um, I did a quick search and ended up with a progress R package and that really appeals to me because it is written by Henrik Bengtsson, who's also the driving force between, behind the future framework, and I really like his idea of creating an API or an interface that others can use and that gives the end user freedom how to use his functions, and we'll see that in practice in a moment. And about parallelization, I've made several videos before um, using the parallel package and the cluster apply function and also the for each construct. But this time we'll use the future framework and we'll also see what the advantages are of the future framework. So we start loading the progressor package and then I <clears throat> simulate a data set. Um, we have 500 independent variables or predictors just named from x1 to x500 and one dependent variable called result that we'll use for regression models. So the task that I want to iterate over is to create one regression model for each predictor. So only one predictor per model and iterate over the 500 predictors. So we're creating a vector, EVs for independent variables, um, that just contains the names from x1 to x500. And now we write a little user-defined function that takes an independent variable as an input, um, creates a model formula using the dependent variable that always does the same result and the tilde and then paste that together with the predictor. And as formulas are specific objects in R, we have to convert this string or character to a formula using the sFormula function, and then we can use that in a simple LM. And what the model shall return is the model summary in this case. We could have gone just for R squared, for example, but in this case I want the full model summaries back. So we define this function, and then we can use that directly, quoting an input, so we're using it on the first variable x1, and it works and we get the regression summary back. Right, but now of course we could copy and paste this code for the other predictors, but that would not be very elegant. So we can use lapply to iterate over this vector of independent variables and get all the model summaries back. So we assign that to an object called result. You see it only takes a moment. The result is a large list, 500 elements for 500 models. Um, we can look at the nth model, in that case model number 500, and we get a regression summary back. So the calculations work successful. Um, we can also use the broom package to get more a more convenient display of results. For example, the glance function gives us overall model results like the r-squared or the overall p-value and the number of observations, whereas the tidy function from the broom package gives us the individual coefficients. So in this case, for model 500, it's just the intercept and the one predictor x500. So our function works, but we haven't implemented progress bars yet. And now, when I tried this out for the first time after a customer request, I was struggling a little bit. I wanted to still use the same lapply call to run my function and combine that with a progress bar, and I failed, because the key when implementing progress bars is that you need to signal to your function when progress is made. So the only approach I could make to, make to uh, work was putting the lapply call inside my function. Um, first, we have to set up um, the progress bar using a progressor function, and we progress along the independent variables in this case. So we assign this to p. This is taken from the documentation to set up the progress bar. Um, and then we have this lapply call, and now I write an anom anonymous function. So the function is not created in the global environment, but just on the fly as this outer function is executed, function x, and then we need these curly braces because we have several R expressions that we want to combine to this anonymous function. The first and last line in the function body are the same as before. We create the model formula and return the summaries of these linear models. And there are two additional lines. One is a sysleep function to delay execution a little bit so that we can visually follow how progress is made. And the second is actually indicating progress using this p function from the progressor package. So let's define the function and try it out. And now one nice thing 
about the progress R package is that it doesn't just implement the progress bar, but it gives the end user of the function control how the progress bar is displayed or if it is displayed at all. So we even um, have the choice not to display a progress bar, bar even though we have set up our function to do so. So I set the global handlers to false and redo the calculation. And now it takes a little bit because I included the sysleep call in the function. Um, but again, we get our 500 models back and I can look at the last model results. So calculation was still successful like before. And now I show you two approaches how to actually display the progress bar. The default is a text progress bar. So I just, um, to make it explicit, I use this function handlers text progress bar. And the first approach how to display the progress bar is um, inserting the actual function call in a with progress call. So let's do that. I run these lines of code and you see now in the bottom of the console that the progress bar displays nicely and we have a decent delay so that we can visually follow how progress is made. So that was successful. And the other approach is um, maybe we have several functions that should display progress bars and then it would be a bit um, cumbersome to always uh, write with progress. So we can just set a global handler. Handlers global equals true and then call our function just like we did before without the progress bar uh, with a simple one-liner. And now the progress bar is displayed because the handler is set accordingly. Another nice thing about the progress R package is that you can use different types of handlers for, and even from different packages. So that's a nice thing about this API. It's so open that others can um, adapt it or it can um, relate to other packages. So for example, you can use the bbar package. I won't run this code now because I have so many models that are calculated very quickly that we would just hear an annoying sound. Uh, but you can easily imagine use cases where you have maybe fewer iterations but calculations that take longer and you may be near your computer but not wanting to stare at the screen. So you could have a meal or drink a coffee and sit by relaxed um, and just hear acoustic signals whenever progress is made. So you just had to change the handler to beep R, for example, to get that. Right, so now we have seen progress bars. We have seen two ways how to implement them. And, but we haven't run our code in parallel yet. So let's do that. The second part of the video, um, we're using the future apply function, which is built on top of the future framework. I reset the handlers and load the future apply package. That also loads the future package. And now um, there's one little change to the function. I exchange the L apply call for future apply. You may have seen my other videos about running R code in parallel. I showed two approaches. One was um, the cluster apply function from the parallel package. So I would have to um, exchange the LApply call for cluster apply. And the other approach was using the for each construct. So you can check out these videos if you like. The downside of these two approaches is that I would have to change my code every time I switch from sequential execution to parallel execution. And that's the nice thing about the future package. I can leave the code the same. Future LApply defines a future that does not specify how it is executed or calculated or evaluated, we could say. So you could say, I changed my LApply call, yes, but I only have to change it once and I don't have to change back and forth inside the function. Let's say you had 10 or 100 functions uh, and maybe um, you start writing your code at work, having great infrastructure at hand, and then you go on a business trip on your small laptop and you only have two cores and you don't want to run your code in parallel, you would have to rewrite all your functions um, to move back from parallel execution to sequential execution. So the future package saves us from that effort. Um, we just use the future LApply function in that call and that can stay the same regardless how the code is evaluated. So we start with sequential execution just to show. Um, I remove this result object to show you that it really gets recalculated well. The progress bar is there again in the console. Um, it takes a moment now because of the sysleep function and I can check the results and calculation was successful again. And now we move to parallel execution. There are several options we have. I show you the multi-session plan first on Windows. Um, you can 
or not operating systems as well, you can open different R sessions, several R sessions in the background. It has some overhead associated with it, but it does run the code in parallel. So let's do that now. And now you see that the progress bar doesn't progress as smoothly anymore because code is executed in parallel, but there's some overhead um, associated with this parallelization. It seemed to run pretty quickly and the calculation was successful again. So plan, multi-session, run several R sessions in the background. Um, but we can also use the approach that I used in the cluster apply video using the parallel package and creating a cluster of workers which uses different cores but in the same R session. So there's less overhead associated with this approach on a local machine. So I just change the plan from multi-session to cluster. The rest of the code is the same. We remove the result object again, redo the calculations, we get the progress bar again in the console. You see, again, it doesn't run so smoothly because of parallel execution and some overhead um, and the calculations were successful and pretty fast. Last thing I want to show you today is um, another progress handler. We, had, we use the default text progress bar so far. It's also a handler progress. It's very similar to the one before, but just shows you how flexible this API is. Um, we can run this and you see that left to the progress bar, we also have this rotating um, line that shows us the machine is busy. I'll run it once again, you see this rotating spinning wheel, you could say, um, to indicate the machine is busy. That was it for today. I hope you find that useful. Two approaches, display progress bars and run your code in parallel using the future framework and the future apply function, future apply package, future L apply function in this case. Um, all the best for your R projects, for setting up your progress bars, for speeding up your code. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing the channel if you haven't already. That really helps. Thank you. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.